Okay, enough is enough. I know it's hard to believe and so many people make this so much harder than what it actually is. When you're starting to learn how to play bass, in the beginning there's really only four chord shapes you need to know. We're going to be talking about that coming up. <laughs> All right, guys, so first and foremost, if you're new here and you're looking to expand your horizon or just your vocabulary or even your fundamentals on the bass guitar, I would strongly consider you subscribe to this channel uh, and make sure you click the notification bell icon thingy down there uh, so you get notified every time I post. Most times it's on Friday, but I post throughout the week as well, so you don't want to miss that. Also, uh, there's a lot of benefits, a lot more benefits and features over at DerekBennett.com, the online education community for bass players. You want to check it out. There's a video Q&A section on there. There's a lot more tutorials we go way more in depth um, you get some uh, actual insight from other bass players that are on there as well it's just a great community for bass players uh, you want to check it out uh, when you have time it's a three-day free trial so there's nothing to lose but anyway you can go ahead and click that red subscribe button along with the notification bell right now I'll give you some time to do that so we're going to jump right into it. This lesson can be for beginners, it can be for intermediate. If you haven't learned chords yet, if you have no idea how to play chords, how to structure chords on the bass guitar, that's what we're going to be talking about right now. Just four chord shapes. Just four chord shapes. All right. So, and if you haven't learned the major scale, I, I strongly suggest you learn the major scale because that's what we're going to be basing this off of. So the major scale, I'm, I'm going to play this in C, just simpler, simpler to, uh, to have no uh, you know, sharps or flats at all so I can explain it to you guys easily. First chord we have is a major chord, all right? On the bass, you typically see that major chord played without the five, all right? So it's the one, three, five, and the seven. It's made up of an arpeggio, all right? So that one, three, five, and the seventh note of the major scale makes up an arpeggio. If you play that together, it makes up a chord. Get it, all right? But anyway, so the first note, third note, fifth note, seventh note. Most times you see that the fifth note omitted on the bass only because you don't want it, sound, you don't want it to sound too muddy. All right, so you hear the C, the E, and the G. C, D, E, F, G, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, I thought I said it wrong. All right, so C, E, B. All right, so you hear that, and you'll hear, and you, once you hear it played higher, you'll appreciate it a little bit more. All right, that higher register and the upper register and those frequencies actually sound a lot better than, you still get the, the tonality of it, but you know, up here is just a little bit different. But anyway, so we're gonna be staying on that one key. We're gonna be staying on the C. All right, the next chord that you would need to know, and we're going to be going more in depth with this, so don't worry exactly where to use these chords, what these chords are for. And also in the 2-5-1 progression, there's tons of information about what these chords mean, <laughs> uh, what some of these chords mean, as well as how to maneuver around them as far as the bass line. But anyway, so the next chords you need to know. I did major. Yeah, major is a 1-3-7. There's a way to play that 5 as well. I said the 5 was omitted, but there it is. So there is a way to play that five, but the notes kind of jumbled together sound a little bit, you know, well, you hear it, so, <laughs> sounds a little bit too much. It just sounds too clustered. All right, so just like open it up, leave that five out, and we have that. So that's the first shape, right? The next chord will be a C minor. So you're dealing with the C minor scale, all right? Or not just C minor, but just a minor scale, the next chord shape. So you have C, D, D sharp, right? Or C, D, E flat, right? F, G, A flat and then B flat, right? So you're dealing with those notes. Same exact concept applies. You're dealing with the first, third, fifth, seventh. That arpeggio makes up the chord. So what do we have? If we leave out the five, we have the one, the three, and the seven, okay? For a C minor scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so we can't play that together. We gotta figure out another way to play it. All right, I'll move that E flat down string to the D string or even just move it up here so I have C I have my E flat and have my B flat that's the second chord shape the next chord shape is dealing with uh, the mixolydian scale if you don't know the modes there's tons of lessons on the modes I, I go into full explain uh, explanation of the modes but the mixolydian mode is the fifth mode of the uh, major C major scale so that chord or that scale if I were to start on C with that same scale, it's actually related to the major scale. It's actually a flat seven. Every single note in that scale is exactly the same as a major scale, but the seventh note is flatted. All right, in the regular major scale, we have a B. All right, but in this scale, in the mixolydian scale, we have a, a flat seven. So they call this the dominant scale as well. So a dominant chord 
we're going to be dealing with one, three, five, seven, again. Same thing for every chord. So, first note, third note, then the seventh note, remember it was flat. There we go. All right, you have that bluesy, same exact chord, all right? Here it goes, uh, upper register higher. So I'm playing this on the 15th fret on the C, all right, if you didn't know where I was, where I was at, okay? So, and then you wanna play that index, um, uh, uh, sorry, thumb, index, and middle. I just play that at the same time, okay? You can consecutively, you know, do that, you know, one by one. And then let all of them ring out. But either way, it's fine for this instance, okay? So, that's a dominant chord. So you have that flat seven. Uh, you have a major third and a flat seven, you know. So it sounds kind of, it sounds a little bit weird. But in context, you know, you know, it sounds pretty good. It's a really bluesy, jazzy chord. I actually really love that dominant seven chord just because it's used so much in funk, jazz, blues. Uh, it's a very versatile chord. You know, you can just use it in a lot of ways. But anyway, so last but not least, we have the minor seven flat five. I know that's a mouthful, but it's actually simpler than what it sounds. All right, so this is kind of derived from the Locrian scale. All right, so you have a flat five in relation to a minor scale, a flat five, in that scale as well as a minor seven, okay? Or a flat seven. Okay, so I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Um, now, Locrian is a part of the modes. It's a seventh mode. Locrian scale, if I were to play that starting on C, fingering for that is one, flat two, right? Fourth finger, I'm using fourth finger, sorry. All right, so there goes that flat five. All right, so I have a, Flat two, minor three, four, flat five, six, seven. Okay, so you see that you have a minor. So it's different than a minor chord and it's different than a major chord and it's different, you know what I mean? It's different than a dominant chord because we, we're dealing with different notes here. So that flat five makes the, makes the difference, okay? So what I like to do is I like to incorporate that five whenever I'm playing that minor seven flat five chord, all right? Because it's right in the name of the chord, minor seven flat five, it gives you two of the notes that you're actually supposed to be playing. Minor seven and a flat five, you know? So <laughs> that gives away the actual chord, the notes in the chord. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be playing, instead of one, three, seven, we're gonna be playing one, five, seven. We're gonna leave out the three. Okay, see how that sounds. But we can also play the five, two. I'll show you in another lesson because I don't want this one to be too long. So one, five, seven. And for this instance, we're gonna be playing one flat, five, seven. All right, you'll see the difference between that. So if I play that. <laughs> That's the Locrian scale. I have to use a first note, fifth note. Beautiful chord. I love that chord. Minor seven flat five. I just play the same chord, but just in a different uh, inversion. But so I, li I like playing that chord that way with the flat five implemented inside it. So you can hear the difference because if I didn't, I would just play one, three, seven, and it'll sound exactly like the minor chord, you know, like the minor one, the second one we did, All right? But just add a little, you know, add a little difference to that, okay? So if you can see, that was the last chord. So I have, uh, let me name out the notes for you. So I have a C, so I have a C for my first, first note. Then I have an F sharp or a G flat for the next one. And then I have the B flat. For the last note, all right? So C, D flat, B flat. And I'm, the fingering I'm playing, I know it's probably look, probably looks weird. The fingering that I'm doing. So I'm doing one. Yeah, it is weird. Now I'm looking at it myself. I'm doing first finger, third finger for that G flat, second finger for the B flat. If you find another way, you can actually bar this too. So you can play first finger, second finger, first finger C, second finger the G flat, and then you're barring that. You're playing that same, on that same fret, you're playing that B flat too. That might be a little bit easier for you, I'm not sure. Either way, go with it and run with it. Okay, so, going through all the chords that we've done. We did major, one, three, seven. Minor, one, three, seven. Dominant, one, three, seven. Minor seven, flat five, one, flat five, seven. 
okay? So those are the difference between those chords. You'll hear those a lot. You can play a whole entire song with those four chords. So that's why I said those are probably the only four chords you need to know in the beginning. There's tons more chords out there, trust me. But those are the fundamental chords. Those, those are your backbone chords, okay? So you have major again, minor, dominant, and then minor seven flat five. So like I said, I'll be going more in depth and there's going to be a continuation to this. I don't want to make this lesson too long um, or this tutorial too long. So I'll be going more in depth on how you use these chords. I only play them in one key, but I'll, I'll go in depth on how you use them and jump around the modes to create a song. So we're talking about some song composition um, as well on the bass so you can start playing chords or even playing behind yourself, backing yourself up with some chords on the bass. I love playing chords on the bass. I think they actually help you so much to where uh, your positioning is and I learned bass with just shapes so the shapes actually help me out you know it shapes me out exactly the help the shapes actually help me out so i know exactly what that chord shape is even if you move the key it's going to be the same thing major seven major seven major major seven that actually sounded pretty nice but anyway <laughs> make sure you know it's coming out clean clear and precise and until next time oh they're sitting down too long